Hi everyone, Ashlyn Giza YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about stonewalling. And I'm going to first off talk about a story that happened to me. Well, it's not a story, it's something true. Um, but, uh, so, and first of all, I wanted to say to you that I haven't been on because I've been sick with a really bad cold and I'm still not feeling the best. I'm, my body is like still trying to get over, um, everything. So bear with me with my nasally voice. So anyways, first of all, I wanted to tell you guys the story about, um, my stonewalling experience. So um, what happened the other day is that my husband was putting together a vanity for me, a vanity that we ordered and picked out because my husband accidentally broke my other vanity that I had at our old apartment. So when we were moving, him and his friend were moving all of our stuff and, um, my husband and his friend accidentally broke my old vanity. So in return, my husband said that he would buy me a new one. So he had bought me a new one. Mind you, both vanities were bought with like tax money. So it wasn't like my husband's working money. It was both of our money. Um, it was, uh, you know, my money too. So uh, for those of you, of you who don't really know me that well, I don't have a working, like a normal corporate working job where I leave the house and I work. I work remotely at home. Um... I have a small online group, um, on, uh, social media and, um, I do my work from there and I take care of the kids and I do laundry dishes and all the housework that people can do. So, um, with that being said, that's why I'm explaining the money situation because I want to make it clear that this is not something that he bought with his own money. Um... Uh, so second, my husband put my vanity together for me because it wasn't one of those vanities where you kind of just like screw the legs of the table on and then it's all put together and done. It wasn't like one that was like pre-set up. Like you literally, it, the vanity was like in multiple, multiple pieces. Like you had to put every single piece together. And I told my husband I was furious when I opened the box and I saw that there was like um, a bunch of pieces all over the place. And I was like, I don't think I can do this. This is ridiculous. This is a joke. They should not make them like this. They should make it easy. It's 2023. Usually nowadays they make things that kind of just like, you know, you twist the legs of something on and it's done and over with. It's not like back in the 80s and 90s and 70s and 60s where you had to like put piece by piece together but this one was and um I was frustrated so I called my husband and I'm like oh no I'm not going to be able to put this together myself because there's a bunch of pieces everywhere so you're gonna have to do this one because I'm not gonna be able to and he's like no problem don't don't worry about it I'll put it together um stop having anxiety it's fine and I'm like are you serious? I'm like, I don't think this is going to be fine because I feel like that this is like something where you'll get even frustrated, even though you're good with tools and stuff. Like, I feel like you might put something together wrong and then you'll figure out that there was another piece that you were supposed to put on and you'll have to take that off and then re put it together type of thing. I'm like, this doesn't seem good. And he's like, even if I have to do that, that's fine. It doesn't really bother me. Well, he work goes to work gets home and he puts together my vanity and as he's putting it together exactly what I said happened happened he put together something wrong so he had to take it apart and re-put it together and I'm like see I told you that I knew that was going to happen I said I didn't want this to happen to either one of us like that is very annoying and and he I'm like doesn't that make you mad and he's like yeah, a little, it's a little annoying, but oh well, I guess I'll, I'll just take it off and do it. So he did it and he was patient with that. Okay, so all said it, all has said and done and he gets my vanity together after like maybe an hour. And, and, uh, so he's like, your vanity's, uh, put together and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And I'm like looking at my vanity, by the way, here's my vanity. So there's the stool and everything. I have a couple books on it, but, uh, 
other than that, there's my vanity. So it's really, really cute. I love it to pieces. And okay, so before I get into the story, there is a button on my vanity that you press right here and it makes like the light go on. So I'll plug it in really quick and I'll show you guys. Hold on a second. I'm going to plug this in. I'll show you guys like what it does. So this button lights up and you're supposed to press it for all the different lighting, lighting settings that you want it on. So see how it changes and then you can turn it off. So one, two, three, and then it goes up off. So I was really excited to see that part of the vanity and but me and my husband saw something really odd. So do you see this weird screw thing on the side? We didn't really know what it was for. At first I thought it was for a drink because if you look at it it looks like it could have been a cup holder but then I'm like no I think that's for your um I think that's for your curling iron. <laughs> so or your straighteners or whatever. And I'm like, let me Google it and let me see. So we're both like talking about that weird twirly thing and that screws on the side of the vanity. And I'm like, I'm, I'm Googling it. I'm like looking at my phone. I'm literally looking down at my phone. And I'm like, okay, um, it's not a cup holder, but I, I can't really find where it says that it is. So I'm thinking it's just like a curling iron thing and then I, I I'm looking at my phone saying that and then I look up and my husband's touching that button now I don't have a problem with him obviously touching that power button to make the lights turn on but that's something that I wanted to see and I had expressed that to him prior to him pressing the button I said plug it in somewhere because I want to see how it works and he said okay so as I'm looking at my phone he must have been trying to find an outlet and found one because when I looked up, he was pressing it and the lights were turning on like the different lights, like colors. I'm like, why did you do that? And he's like, what? And I'm like, well, I mean, I asked you to plug that in because I wanted to see what it what it did. And he he's like lays back on our bed and his arms are like crossed. I can't really do it because I'm holding my phone, but like his arms are like crossed, like in defense, defensive. And he's just looking at me when I'm telling him, why did you do that? That was kind of rude. I, I wanted to see what that did. Like, I wanted to enjoy that with you. Like, why wouldn't you want to see me happy and be the first one to touch the light and turn it on and explore my own vanity? And as I'm explaining to this, he looks at me and he's like, whatever. And I'm like, whatever. I'm like, you're actually kind of being rude right now. And he's like, I'm being rude. I just put together your whole vanity and I'm like, um, yeah, and you are being very rude to me right now. And he's like, I'm being rude. You didn't even appreciate me putting together your vanity. And I'm like, wrong. I do appreciate you putting together my vanity. That's actually why that this is messed up because I was really excited to explore the vanity and for you to plug the light in so I could touch the button so I could see the, the different lighting that the mirror does. And I was excited and you ruined that because you did that when you knew I was looking at my phone to figure out what that metal um, spiral thing was. That's not nice. And as I'm saying this in this exact tone of voice, he looks at me and he's like, uh, I owe you an apology. And I was like, uh, for the way you're acting right now and like how you just like did plug that in and did everything with my vanity without me. Yeah. I mean, and then I'm like, cause you're not understanding what I'm saying. And he like gets up in my face and is like staring at me like this with his eyes down. And I'm like, he, he was like, it looked like he was looking at my lips. Now, a week or two prior to this argument, I tell him that I don't like my front teeth because I had to have dental work done on done on them when I a long time ago because I chipped my tooth and the dentist like shortened my front teeth and they used to be a little bit longer and now I don't really like them. So 
I told him that like a week or two ago. And so during this specific fight that I'm telling you guys about, he was like looking down at my teeth, gets really close to my face and starts looking down at my teeth. And I'm like, is there something on my lip or something? Or, and I'm like, start wiping my lip and he's just still staring. And I'm like, and I thought in my head, oh, wow, I know what this guy is doing. He's like, for real, staring at my teeth. Like, for real, staring at my teeth. Like, point blank, staring at my front teeth after I told him that, um, in confidence, my insecurities about my teeth and how I don't like them. He's, like, literally putting me down without saying any words. Like, literally a low bo blow, bo low below the belt, um... Uh, action that he's doing to me without saying anything, staring at my teeth. So I call him out on it. I'm like, you're, oh my God. Wow. I'm like, you're staring at my teeth. You're fucking looking at my teeth because I told you that I didn't like my teeth. And he goes, I like your teeth. And I go, yeah, but Jason, you know that I don't like my teeth. So you're looking at my teeth to hurt me. And I started crying because that was very, very hurtful the fact that he knew that I didn't like my teeth and then he was staring at my teeth to, out of spite to hurt me. So he abruptly gets up off the bed and starts walking down our hallway. And I'm like, I'm like in the, our bedroom, like, what the fuck is just happened? Like, I'm telling this guy something that I felt that was rude that he did. And he's literally getting up and blowing this up, getting up and walking away from me after he just insulted me by staring at my teeth. And, um, so I'm like, I, I, he's like, nope, nope. As he's walking away, he's like, nope, nope. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm like, not doing what? I'm like listening to something that's, that I felt that you did was rude to me. That's what, are you serious right now? Right now you're at, I'm telling you how I feel and you're straight up ignoring me. And then you just, um, insulted me and, uh, hurt my feelings by like staring down at my teeth in a real obvious way to know for me to know that you're looking at them that's not very nice and then he so he sits goes out and sits in our living room and doesn't come back to our room so I go out there because I'm more of a communicator I'm more mature than he is I like to talk through and communicate about my problems with him or our problems that we have together instead of just brushing them under the rug like his family taught him to do. So I went out to the kitchen and I looked at him and I said, you are being very rude and very immature and very disrespectful. You're walking away from me when I'm talking to you and you're also not listening to any of my feelings that I just told you. The only thing that I had a concern about is you going off and plugging to my vanity and pushing the button and exploring my vanity when you knew I was looking at my phone and you could have told me to say, you could have stopped and said, Hey babe, quit looking at your phone for a second. Look at the vanity, press the button. Let, uh, I want to see your face when you, uh, when the lights, different lights turn on, you know, he could have said something like that to me. And I told him that I said, but instead you plugged it in and you didn't even, you didn't even look up to see if I was looking at my phone or anything or paying attention to you plugging that in. And you just went off and went ahead and, and looked at my vanity and everything without me. I said that, that was rude. And I pointed that out to you. And then you started, um, being defensive. And then you got up and looked at my teeth, which you knew I was insecure about. That's actually abuse. That's actually, you're, you're taking something. I came to you in confidence and you're hurting me with it. So I was really like um, hurt that night, the whole night, even after his apology, because I didn't feel it was sincere or genuine. So the next day when he thought everything was okay, I reached out to him on the phone and I was like, look, what happened yesterday was not okay. I don't, I don't know if you thought that you were going to get away with acting like that to me, but you're not going to. And it, we are going to talk about that because that's what we do. That's what we do in our marriage. That's what Ashley and Jason do. That's not what your parents do. It's not what my parents do. We're not other people. We are going to work out our problems and communicate. We're not going to ignore them. 
and I'm like telling him all this and I told him I did research about stonewalling, the word stonewalling, because I wanted to figure out what you actually did to me yesterday because I couldn't really understand. I knew in my heart it was some form of abuse, but I, I know it wasn't, it was, it was being passive aggressive, but it wasn't quite being a narcissist or like a, it wasn't quite, it wasn't physical abuse or anything like that, but I knew it was some kind of like mental abuse. So I started looking things up online and I found stonewalling. So here's some things about stonewalling. Now that I told you guys the story about our fight, it says, uh, stonewaller, a stone person who uses stonewalling, uses it as a trauma response, um, a coping mechanism. They do it when they're overwhelmed or trying to keep their self-preservation. Um, they tend to shut down when there's an issue being talked about or a disagreement, or and they refuse to cooperate. Um, they use it to um, preserve their ego and they also use it to try to control the emotional temperature of the relationship. They try to use it to determine by their behavior what's okay to talk about and when it's okay to talk about it, um, resulting most of the time in no closure or any resolving the problem. So stonewalling is when one person is cognitively or emotionally inaccessible to another person. In relationships, in relationships, this means one partner blocks out the other partner in a, a figurative or literal sense. This is a defensive um, stance often harks back to our childhoods. Now, when my husband was little, his parents, all they did was fight, he told me. And when there was problems that were in his family nobody ever communicated about them. So I know that this isn't an Ashley problem. I know that this is my husband's problem that he needs to grow up, grow up and resolve. And I've told him this many times. Um, so, but I'm, I'm doing this YouTube video, not just for me. I'm doing this YouTube video for anybody else who's going through this and has to deal with a person who doesn't know how to communicate when you, when you're having a disagree, a disagreement. So uh, Dr. Gottman, re Gottman reports that he can predict divorce with near 100% accuracy calls stonewalling one of the four horsemen that indicate the likelihood of a divorce. It's a form of punishment and or manipulation. One who stonewalls refuses to communicate and men are more likely to stonewall than women. Some examples of stonewalling are giving the silent treatment, abruptly walking away, which is what my husband did. He did both. He quit talking to me and he got up and walked away from me when we were having a problem. Avoiding eye, con on, avoiding eye contact, avoiding conflict, acting busy or abruptly moving on to another task. Now I'm going to stop right there and say really quick, Another different little fight that me and my husband had one night, I was telling him something that I thought was messed up that he did. This was a different night. And he was scroll before I told him something that was messed up, he was scrolling on our computer to find a movie for us to watch. Now I told him my concern and I said, hey, that was really messed up what you just said. That was actually not very nice. And that is not what I was doing. You, you were accusing me of putting saying that um, I'm guilt tripping you when I'm not doing that. Can you turn around, please, and apologize to me? Because that was not very nice telling me that, that I'm guilt tripping you. And then he goes, he kept looking at the movies and he's like, nope, I'm not doing this. And so that's a prime example of avoiding conflict and acting busy or abruptly moving on to another task. So if a man or a woman, when you're in a relationship, starts to, um, starts like cleaning or like starts like, um, washing dishes or doing laundry when you're in the middle of a fight or a disagreement, that is a form of stonewalling. Um, if they don't say, okay, I think that I need time 
and I need a moment to cool down. So I think I'm going to do laundry and dishes before we continue this conversation because I need a moment to think. If they don't say that to you prior to them doing dishes or uh, moving on to whatever it is they're doing, they are stonewalling you. So um, acting busy or abruptly moving on to another task, minimizing concerns. So in other words, the other person is like acting like everything you're saying is so ridiculous and you're being so, so sensitive and you're overreacting and um, everything that you're saying is just oh so boohoo and um, so minimizing cons concerns using aggressive body language rolling their eyes scowling and when they when they do decide to communicate with you they communicate in a defensive communication form um, they av avoid conversations about the issue and the problem so in other words, they, they'll they talk about anything with you. But as soon as you start talking about something that they are uncomfortable with or, or a problem that you have, then they'll start um, shutting down and not wanting to talk about anything. Um, they'll engage in obsessive behaviors, deflection, and placing blame on, on you or somebody else or or um, an excuse, give you an excuse. And then they can try to ignore you and pretend that they don't hear you when you're talking to them or um, when you're expressing your concerns or showing that your feelings are hurt. So, um, you know, I found out after all this time what my husband does whenever we argue. It's called stonewalling. And I've let him know that I... that. Um, I know what he's doing to me. I'm not accepting that and that we can either talk about her, our problems and he can learn to be mature or he needs to go to a therapist and go get some help because um, that's not something that I'm accepting or um, putting up with in my life. I've already been subjected to enough abuse in my life. I've been subjected to sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. Um, verbal abuse and everything so I'm not I'm not having another um, mental abuser um, doing that to me and I let him know that so I'm just making this video not because of him but to help other women realize that if so if their husband or wife is doing this to them then that's what it's called it's called stonewalling and it needs to be brought up in the relationship so that way you guys can learn how to communicate and move on because if you guys can't figure out the problems in your relationship then things aren't going to work out so I he's already told me his problems with me a long time ago I've been getting therapy I've been working on it he said that I had an anger issue so I went to therapy and I've been going to therapy for almost two years um I've learned instead of calling names or um you know us nudging at each other which is kind of getting physical or anything like that I learned to just talk about the problem just look right at him and say you know you did this I don't like it please don't do that um we need to talk about it and then um to do all that and then if that other person which in my case would be my husband but in you guys's case your husband or wife or friend or whoever it is doing it to you doesn't listen to you after you say that you have a problem you're you're not you don't like what they're doing and um let's talk about this and they don't want to they don't want to work things out it's showing that they really don't want to they're stonewalling you they're letting you know that your feelings aren't important the things you're saying are not important and uh that they don't want to deal with it that's what they're showing you so um I hope that this helps you guys. Um, it definitely helped me when I did research. Um, it's something I'm definitely not putting up with. So I just thought I would make a video about it and talk to you guys about it. And me and my husband, we are, we're fine now. There's no fighting or arguing anymore now. Um, we've both been under stress because we've lost, we lost a baby. We just recently moved. Um, we're both tired because we haven't really got sleep since we moved because you guys know how moving is. You have to move all your stuff. You have to decorate your home after that. You have to, there's still little 
odds and ends things that you have to do when you're a homeowner when you purchase a home to own it. So we've had to do a lot of th different little things like that. My husband um, works, you know, eight to 10 hour days and most of the, most of the time, 10 hour days. So he's tired. So I get that we're both tired and we've gone through things. So that's kind of what the problem was. Cause when we talked about it is that we're both just exhausted and my husband admitted that he can get over he can just get overwhelmed and he doesn't really know how to express himself so after he had said that then that made me understand okay then we we just need to calm ourselves down when we're communicating and keep communicating until the problem whether he has one or I have one gets resolved that's what we learned about each other so see we've been mar married for almost seven years and there's still stuff that we learn about each other. So, I mean, it, you don't know somebody just because you've been with them for a long time. I learn new stuff about my husband every day and he learns new stuff about me every day. So, um, it was good to talk about and it was good to research and find out that there was that. And um, then it made him be able to communicate with me a little bit better when I brought that up to him. So, I don't know, but... Uh, there's the topic for today and I will be on with another life topic. Thank you.